success at last. Aha, we found you. How are you, Bruce Chapman? I am. How are you? I'm Ben Stein. Well, Very well, kind of you to have me here. I'm delighted to meet you. Can I look around and see your options? Absolutely. Do you just have this floor or do you have several other floors as well? No, this is it. This is it? You've been in an awful lot of trouble for being in such a small office. I thought it was going to be like the Pentagon. We're like the little boy that said the emperor has no clothes. And um, mm -hmm. he didn't have a big organization either. You, when you go around and raise funds, you, your people are not saying to you, um, by the way, we're going to get all these scientists out of the classroom and put Christ back in the classroom. Well, I, I don't know that Christ has ever been in the science classroom. This is not a religious argument. This is something that people, uh, we, have, we have fellows who are Jewish or agnostic or, or various other things. There are people, there are, there are uh, Muslim scientists. There are people of all kinds of backgrounds who agree that Darwin's theory has failed. And so why would you bring religion into it? You don't need to religion. This is a red herring. And people who don't have an argument are reduced to throwing uh, sand in your well, eyes. Well, if the Discovery Institute could get its wish about this subject, what would your wish be? Well, on this subject, as on others, we'd like people to be able to have a robust uh, dialogue and even a debate where the evidence, the best evidence, the best, in this case, the best scientific evidence is, a, is made available to people. Well, surely no one questions there should be a debate. Oh, yes, they do. They do? They say the debate has been settled. Well, the issue is when settled. was the debate settled? Ben, I'd like you to talk to the scientists. You don't want to get your science from me. Mr. Chapman claimed ID had nothing to do with religion. So why was my first stop Biola University, formerly known as the Bible Institute of Los Angeles? How much money have you ever gotten from Jerry Falwell? Uh, zero dollars. How about Pat Robertson? Zero. Are you a minister? No. Are you a priest? No. Pastor? No. Youth pastor? Oh, I did teach Sunday school once. <laughs> Has this all been resolved? I mean, aren't we all Darwinists now? Except for a few cranks like you? Well, it's a funny thing that questions that aren't properly answered don't go away. This, this question is, is loaded with all kinds of political baggage, but one-on-one -on -one at a scientific meeting after the third or fourth beer, my experience has been that many evolutionary biologists will say, yeah, this theory's got a lot of problems. So you, you mean to tell me that there really is a debate among scientists about whether or not evolution occurred? Well, evolution is a kind of funny word. It depends on how one defines it. If, you, if it means simply change over time, even the most rock-ribbed fundamentalist knows that the history of the Earth has changed, that there's been change over time. If you define evolution precisely, though, to mean the common descent of all life on Earth from a single ancestor via undirected mutation and natural selection, that's textbook definition of neo-Darwinism, biologists of the first rank have real questions. But the modern theory of intelligence design is just microwaved creationism. I don't think that's the case. Creationism properly understood begins with the Bible and says, how can I fit the Bible into the, the data of science? Intelligent design doesn't do that. Intelligent design is the study of patterns in nature that are best explained as a result of intelligence. So intelligent designers believe that God is the designer? Not necessarily. Um, intelligent design is a minimal commitment scientifically to the possibility of detecting intelligent causation. Dr. Nelson didn't sound like a crazy person, but I still suspected ID was nothing but reheated creationism. My next stop didn't seem like it was going to alleviate those fears. I didn't crawl out of the ocean. I didn't come from no monkey. Science tends to forget evolution's just a theory. They presented in the textbooks and on animal TV. Like 
It's back, but tell me, were you there? 12 million BC. Evolution is a from an intelligent design perspective is perfectly acceptable if the, if the sense is that this, how did the design get implemented? The issue is is there a real design there and are these material mechanisms like natural selection are these adequate to account for everything we see in biology and our argument is no it's not. But Darwin produced all this evidence from his travels and his studies at the Galapagos that evolution explained things. If you look at the history of science, people often have a good idea and then they decide just to run with it. And they say, we're gonna apply this everywhere. And so Darwin takes his idea of natural selection and says, I'm gonna explain all of life with it. I mean, physics used to be Newtonian physics. Newton was physics. And then you gotta look to Einstein, general relativity. It's not, Newton is enough. Well, I think likewise what we're finding with Darwin is that he had some valid insights, but it's not the whole picture. Okay. Darwinism may not be the complete picture, but what made these guys think they had the missing pieces? I put this question to Dr. Stephen Meyer, author of the paper that originally got Dr. Sternberg in so much trouble. It's hard to believe that this little town is the headquarters of giant microsoft. enabled Mr. Gates to become fantastically rich. Maybe that's what Stephen Meyer's doing. Maybe this is somehow going to make him fantastically rich. We'll pin him down like a butterfly on a butterfly board. Butterfly on a killing board. Coffee shop straight ahead. Newton is buried in the genius's corner at Westminster Abbey, right? That's correct, yeah. Darwin is also buried in Westminster and, Abbey. Right, and yeah. so is Darwin. Right. Right near right. each other, right. right? And you're here in Redmond in a little building without a sign. <laughs> right? And you're obviously an incredibly smart guy, but how dare you challenge someone who's buried in the genius's corner next to Newton at Westminster Abbey? Well, uh, it may seem a little cheeky, but it's what scientists are supposed to do. When I was in Cambridge, one of my supervisors often advised us to uh, beware the sound of one hand clapping which was a way of saying if there's an argument on one side, mm -hmm. there's bound to be an argument on the other. And what I found in, in studying the structure of the argument in The Origin of Species is that for every evidence-based argument for one of Darwin's two key propositions, there is an evidence-based counter-argument. Well, but is it a debate? I mean, there's just you and a couple of other guys in a dinky little office downtown, <laughs> say, on one side, and there's the faculties of all the great universities of the world on the other side. Speaking with a great uniform and yes. authoritative voice. Right. Yeah. Well, in any case, the, the debate really isn't going to be settled by, by numbers. It's going to be settled by the evidence and the arguments. While I was still in Bill Gates' country, Dr. Meyer recommended I check in with molecular biologist Jonathan Wells. What kind of names do they call you? Uh, creationist. What do you say back to them when they say you're a creationist? Well, I usually don't get the opportunity. What's at stake for you personally here? First of all, I love science. I think the way Darwinism corrupts the evidence, distorts the evidence, is bad for science. Uh, well, the other scientists would tell you to just shut up if you love science, okay? Because <laughs> you're, sort of, you're sort of being a bomb thrower into science. I am upsetting the apple cart, and I, yeah. think, I think it deserves to be upset in this case. Why? because the evidence is being distorted to prop up a theory that I think doesn't fit it. Was Darwinism really that bad? Perhaps a change of scenery would give me a fresh perspective. Mr. Berlinski, I assume? How are you, sir? So where are you from originally? I was born in New York. Yes. Spent 31 years in Manhattan. Yes. And um, I spent a lot of time in California, too. And uh, t tell me all the various universities where you studied or taught. No, I was at Princeton, and I had a professorship at Stanford, and I left Stanford, and I taught at Rutgers. I left Rutgers, and I taught at the City College in New York. I left the City College of New York. I taught at the Baruch College. I taught at San what Jose. What did you teach at Baruch College? Anything they wanted. Come on in. Thank you, monsieur.